Welcome everybody. This is the Yellow House Community's um, first official information session open to the public. Uh, we're so glad that you're here tonight to join us. Um, and before we get started, I'd love to do some introductions uh, to, to introduce our founding families as well as our current staff um, who are supporting our house. So I'm Elise Hayden. I'm the executive director of the Yellow House Community. I grew up in the Seattle area and moved to Vermont to attend Middlebury College. I fell in love with Vermont and said, I need to stay here. I need to figure out just how I can make an impact in this community. Um, so I worked at Middlebury High School for 12 years in the Diversified Occupations Program, where I met um, some of our current Yellow House participants and their families. Um, and that's how I also found out about Yellow House, is um, through one of uh, the families of a former student. And they said, there are these two families that are doing this amazing thing called Yellow House. You have to get involved. Um, and I'm so glad I got that phone call about a year and a half ago. It's been a really amazing opportunity from there on. So uh, first of all, this is Andrea Murray um, and her husband, Chris Murray, uh, one of the founding families. And then uh, Kristen and Joe Brown are here as well. And Andrea and Chris are parents of Pierce. Um, and Kristen and Joe are the parents of BIP. Um, and you may have seen our slide show going through um, with those individuals as well as some others who I'll speak about a little bit later. Um, we also have our amazing Yellow House support team here tonight, uh, Kim Franklin, as well as Sally Thodal, <laughs> Tom O'Connor, and our nurse affiliate, Mary Gill. Um, and we call these guys the dream team. They really are incredible. Um, a group of mostly retired uh, former special educators and support staff. And Mary was um, the nurse at Mary Hogan for many years. And they really invested in the group of um, young adults we're working with and into this community. So we're really pleased to have them on board. Also, just a, a quick note that all the snacks uh, tonight were prepared and baked by our Yellow House friends with the guidance from our support staff. Um, so please dig in. Um, that's way too much for me to bring home to my family tonight. <laughs> All right. So this agenda actually probably reminds Joe of our board meeting agenda. It's really ambitious, but I promise um, I will keep it to about 20 minutes to a half an hour. Um, so I'd love to go through this and then open it up for questions. Um, so I'll give you an overview of what exactly exactly the Yellow House is, as well as the history behind it, um, talk about our location here in Middlebury, <coughs> vision for the future, and then get into more specifics about programming, our timeline, um, the application process, who we partner with, um, and then how to get involved with the Yellow House. All right, so this is a question that when we're out in the co-op and we're in the community, we get asked a lot. Yellow House, what is this Yellow House? Well, in addition to being located in an actual yellow house, um, we are an intentional residential community located right in downtown Middlebury. And we're inspired by the Camp Hill life sharing model. Um, Camp Hill is a worldwide organization um, that actually has a campus here in Vermont called Heartbeat. And that idea behind uh, Camp Hill is that individuals with disabilities live in life sharing situations with neurotypical, um, you might call them caregivers, but neurotypical roommates, housemates, family mates. Um, and our founding families really loved this idea of life sharing um, for their adult children. Um, and so we are loosely modeled after Camp Hill. So we are working with adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities and living together with neurotypical individuals. Um, and just like a traditional family, everyone works together to pitch in to run the household. Right? So um, we'll talk a bit about history in a moment, um, but the idea is that our founding families were thinking about the future of their um, adult children, and they said we want them to continue living lives that feel just like family. Um, so Yellow House provides residents with safe residential family households the support to continue developing skills, interests, relationships. 
Those are things that we all strive um, to develop, skills to be connected, to get to pursue our hobbies and our passions. Um, we also have rich day programming at Yellow House, which means everything from attending sporting events at Middlebury College, to grocery shopping at the co-op, to swimming and cross-country skiing, to hosting uh, Halloween events and <coughs> holiday parties. Um, additionally, we are committed to supporting individuals and continuing work. Meaningful work is so critical to all of our happiness and health. And so, just like Camp Hill communities, we're investing in meaningful work for our residents. So that may mean continuing a job that someone has before they come to Yellow House, or getting involved in Yellow House industry that we'll speak about in a bit. Um, and maybe most important is that we have a household that's culture is full of joy and happiness that celebrates the individual. It doesn't look at someone with a disability and say, those are things you can't do, but we look at what individuals can do and how they can contribute to their household and to their community. So the history part, and I asked the founding families if they might want to share a bit about the, the history and their vision when they started out. Um, as I mentioned, Yellow House was started just um, about a year and a half ago, probably by the Murrays and the Browns. And Andrea, do you mind speaking just a bit? Oh, um, I wasn't planning oh, to, but... Sorry. Um, like Elise, I can really quickly say, like Elise said, we um, had, I had a conversation one day with with Joe Brown, and um, we we realized that we have something very much in common, which is we both want something pretty amazing for our adult children uh, once they are done with high school, and it's probably more than we can offer them in our own homes. And we want also to secure for them a sense of place uh, when we're not, no longer around. Um, and we very deliberately thought of Middlebury community because it's a community both of our children are attached to and um, to which they feel they belong. And so we started dreaming and we brought our spouses together and we brainstormed and we got really excited about trying to make something like this happen and it's starting to take on a, a life of its own and it's pretty exciting and I'm happy to answer more questions afterwards and I think uh, Elise, Elise's um, presentation really touches on all of it so I'm just going to let you go. Do you have anything you want to add to it? No, no. <laughs> I will say though that these four people um, are so invested I'm getting emotional already in the future of their children and other members of this community that are going to be in Yellow House. Um, it's very inspiring. They are working board members. They don't just sit there and say, oh, I'd like this and that to happen. But Andrea, you know, is daily emailing with me to try and shape Yellow House to be something that will celebrate her son but also others in this community. So it's pretty special. And um, yeah, I'm really proud to be part of it. Let's move on. <laughs> Um, so 29 Seminary Street. Yellow House is located at 29 Seminary Street, which is about a block away from the co-op, um, for those of you who are familiar with that area of town. Um, one of the best things about our location is that we're just about a quarter of a mile from everything in town. The post office, the rec fields, the library. And we can walk to Middlebury College. We can walk to see friends and neighbors. We can walk to a grocery shop, to multiple stores. Um, and that really serves our residents and our future residents um, because it allows them to have access to everything that all of us would want in their communities. Uh, our house has capacity for three or four individuals with special needs, as well as up to three caregivers. Um, so what we will talk about a little later is um, employment opportunities and that we'll be seeking some individuals to um, become part of our life sharing team. We are licensed as a therapeutic community of residents, recognized by the state of Vermont. And that is a milestone that we've been working on for over a year. Um, and that involved upgrades to our house so that we were um, ADA accessible to someone with a wheelchair, a walker, or mobility challenges, um, 
could have access to Yellow House. So our main floor is ADA accessible. We also have a, a full sprinkler system and um, fire alarm system to support the needs of our individuals. Um, we're really pleased to have that designation because that also open up, opens up opportunities for funding. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, vision for the future. So before we get into the nitty gritty of what's happening at Yellow House right now, I think it's really important we talk about what Yellow House will become in the future because this is not just about having a home for Pierce and for BIP. This is about having something that is greater than those two individuals that is a community within a community. That's what Yellow House is all about, creating a small community to be part of a larger community. And so some of the future initiatives that we're working towards are establishing a yellow house industry, so that meaningful work piece that I spoke about. You know, if a job in the community isn't the right fit for one of our residents, we'd love to be able to offer something where residents and our caregivers could work together as a team to create a product. It might be a food truck that yellow house operates. It might be um, making, you know, growing popcorn at a friend's farm to then pop and sell as popcorn balls at the college football games. Hope there's, there's a college a person right here, yes. Um, and the possibilities are endless. We really are aiming for an industry that is uh, in line with the interests of our residents, so we don't yet have the yellow house industry. And we don't think we should have it until we have our residents in the house and they have an idea of what they really want to do and how they want to contribute. And we also have plans to renovate the carriage barn, which is a second uh, dwelling on the 29 Seminary Street property. So next time you walk by the Yellow House, you can check out there's this big carriage barn that right now we have tenants in, and we have goals to renovate that to be a second dwelling um, to join our TCR and have a second place for individuals with special needs and care livers to uh, cohabitate. And then the final piece on there was that we are working towards becoming a self-sustaining organization that can be replicated in other communities. We've heard from people all over New England now, you know, whether it's New Hampshire, Massachusetts, even some friends from New York that say, this looks amazing, how can we do this in our community? So we would love to be able to pass on our model to other organizations so that they could start something similar to Yellow House in their community. Right, so what's happening at Yellow House right now? Some of you may have met our Yellow House friends. That's the term we use for the individuals who are participating in programming right now. Um, and you may have met them out grocery shopping at the co-op or at the college exercising. So right now we have a small group of individuals that have been involved really from the start. They were involved in summer programming with Jody James. Um, they were involved throughout the fall and their individuals have an earnest interest in becoming residents of Yellow House. So we're doing this transition programming as a way to try and uh, find the right fit. And we're going to open that transition program to other applicants who we feel like could um, become residents at Yellow House as well. But Yellow House programming, once we do have uh, residents in our house, is going to involve uh, this concept, this theme of taking care. So individuals are taking care of each other, first and foremost. But they're taking care also of their home and their bodies and their community. So all of our programming is based on this theme. And it creates a lot of fun opportunities to get out and about in the community, to help one another, to do kind things. Um, and right now, I'm looking back at Kim because she, is, um, she has organized a lot of our great programming. But right now these guys are pursuing interests and they're learning how to take care of one another, which is really critical. Um, I spoke a bit about that meaningful work piece. That's also going to be really integral to programming. Um, so Yellow House will not be a place where residents are sitting around watching TV for hours on end or playing video games by themselves in their rooms. That might be part of what their day or week looks like. But Yellow House is really about community. So we want to have meaningful work opportunities, teamwork opportunities, industry opportunities. Um, and I'll also mention that Yellow House, our design is to be an all-inclusive room, board, enriching program, and work support. And that's a different 
offering than um, some supported living situations. But we think it's really critical that if the group wants to go to Echo Center and you know, see the butterfly exhibit and then stop by the train tracks and then go visit the library that their mom's architecture firm designed, that we don't have to think about the cost of that. That's all going to be involved and it's always going to be whoever wants to participate in that group activity gets to go. So we feel like that's a really uh, lovely feature of Yellow House. Okay, so our timeline. For those of you who were aware of Yellow House, last summer or even when the property was purchased, you might be saying to yourself, wow, this has taken a long time. <laughs> and for people who have built a business, it, we're probably moving at a, a super a sprint right now. But the point behind our slow, if you will, timeline is that we're trying to be really intentional about how we build Yellow House and how we build this as an organization, as a community, as an offering for peers, PIP, and other friends. So, as I mentioned, we had summer programming. We had transition programming this past fall. We are continuing transition programming right now. And this summer, we are, well actually this spring, we're opening up um, applications to residents. So this summer, we'll be ongoing transition programming as part of the um, admissions process and trial periods. And at that time, we'll also be looking to um, solidify our household staff. Come fall, so September, October, that time, 2020, that's our goal for move-in for residents. So it actually feels like all of a sudden it's coming pretty quickly. I see Tom back there smiling. Um, and then beyond that, we'll look to next year to renovate the carriage barn and invite residents to move in to the carriage barn in the fall of 2021 or shortly thereafter. the application process. Uh, besides what is Yellow House, the second most frequently asked question is, can I have an application? And families want to know how to apply, and we've been working really hard to create an application that we feel like is thorough, intentional, um, also supports the needs of different families, and is respectful of the funding process that I'll speak to in a moment. Um, so, Yellow House within a profile. One of the harder things about creating an intentional community is knowing that it's not going to fit just everybody. It will fit some resonance and it won't be the right fit for others. So Yellow House has a capacity of three to four individuals. The carriage barn will have the same. So that's a small group, but we hope that it's going to be a rich community and that will extend beyond that. Um, our vision for Yellow House residents are individuals that are calm, nonviolent, that enjoy social outings and engagements, that enjoy interactions. We also envision that Yellow House residents are individuals who need assistance with self-care, with managing finances, with accessing the community, with developing, <laughs> and, developing and continuing relationships with peers and other individuals in their lives. Yellow House residents are likely individuals who need 24-hour support and supervision and have skills in some areas, but deficits in areas where they need to have that live-in support with them. <clears throat> so that is already a pretty specific group of individuals. Um, that said, we really our goal is to have Yellow House be a community-friendly organization. So if the resident profile, which um, is included with our application, if that doesn't fit right with you or a family member or an individual you're thinking of, um, don't think of this as Yellow House shutting the door. Yellow House has plans to be part and engage with a greater community. So our application process, as I mentioned, we have an application we've developed. Um, I would like people to email me to request the application. Uh, it's about 28 or 30 pages long, so we decided not to print out uh, a ton of them. Uh, we also have been seeking support from CSAC and other organizations um, so that the application can best reflect what Yellow House can offer and alternatives and options for funding. Uh, part of our application process in admissions process is that we 
will ask individuals to participate in our transition program. So right now, it's three days a week. This summer, we'll bump it up to five days a week. So we're asking individuals to participate in that so we can start to see the fit between potential residents and staff. Um, in addition to that, we will have a residential trial, which will be an overnight piece, um, likely between two and four weeks long. Um, and that's something that we don't anticipate commencing until the fall um, or right before the fall when we are um, ready to move in and have our staff hired. Um, the, and the final piece on there is uh, fees and funding. And you know what, I, I think I'll just speak to this, Joe. Sure. And then during questions, um, I'm looking to Joe because he's my financial guru <laughs> of the team. Um, so this is a challenging part of Yellow House for us to navigate um, because funding is in, was really individual for each specific resident. So we have right now, as we look at funding, um, three options for people to cover fees for Yellow House. We have the option for private pay. We have the option for an individual um, to seek out Medicaid waiver funding, and that is something that uh, adults who are, have aged out of school most likely already have a Medicaid waiver. Um, so that is something that we encourage families to connect with their designated agency. Um, CSAC is the designated agency here in Addison County for most individuals. Um, but that's a conversation that needs to really start with CSAC, but that Yellow House hopes to be involved with as well in the future. Uh, another part of the funding piece will likely be fundraising or uh, gifts in kind, things, other ways that families can contribute um, to cover the cost. That said, it really comes down to the individual needs. So part of the application process is us assessing the level of support and individual needs. CSAC or designated agency will also be assessing the level of support needed and the level of funding um, that is connected with that. So unfortunately, we can't give you just a dollar figure right now for what funding will look like. Um, but our goal is that we don't have to turn any resident away because of funding. Um, and we're really dedicated to working with families to make Yellow House a reality for them. So one thing that I wanted to note here is um, the partnerships and advisors we've worked with so far to give you an idea of our path and our process and who we are working with and who's helping us navigate this uncharted territory of creating an intentional community in Middlebury. Um, so Counting Service of Madison County and Greg Mayer is here today. Thank you for being here with us. Um, counseling Service has been excellent in providing guidance, um, constructive criticism, giving us some idea of how Medicaid waiver funding and all of that is navigated. And it's tricky, and um, they have a hard job, so I appreciate you guys working with us, uh, especially as a new organization, which is, we have a lot of questions. Um, and so thank you for being here. Also, Heartbeat Life Sharing, that's the Camp Hill community I mentioned um, up in Hardwick, Vermont. Um, they've been amazing, you know, helped us understand how to operate as a TCR, but as an intentional community as well. Um, Dr. Raymond Chin, who is a cognitive behavioral therapist, um, he is someone that the Murrays worked with. Um, they've worked with him actually for years, and he has um, trained our staff and will continue to be someone who um, helps train us and helps us understand how to better serve our unique group of residents. Jim Caffrey, who's here tonight, thank you. A uh, special needs attorney, um, very well versed in understanding uh, the law when it comes to individuals with disabilities and navigating things at the state level, so thank you for that. Um, Mary Gill, our nurse affiliate, um, not just part of our team, but also just an expert in her field, um, and she has so kindly agreed um, to partner with us and be our go-to person for all medical needs and, and training and working with our residents. So we're very fortunate to have her. Um, and finally, um, the organization that oversees a lot of what we're doing is called DALE, the Vermont Department of Aging and Independent Living. Um, and they're a great resource, and they're also a great resource for families. Um, 
So I encourage you to check out their website and see um, who's involved and what kind of things they offer. Okay, get involved. I'm really pleased to see tonight um, some volunteers and people that have come by already and um, expressed interest in working with Yellow House. Um, we are actively seeking our life sharing staff, so that household head um, and co workers. And I'll just briefly explain those positions. And then, if that's something that appeals to you, I'd love for you to email me so that I can. Um, tell you more about the, about the role and um, find out more about you and see if that would be the right fit for Yellow House. So a household head, I kind of think of them as a house parent, right? The household head might be an individual or it could be a couple as well that comes to live at Yellow House. They become part of our leadership team and they're, our, they're the parents, if you will, of the household. They will have the opportunity to help us shape what Yellow House is. Um, they'll also have the opportunity to bond with our group of young adults and our coworkers and that team, um, as well as work with myself and the founding families. So that household head is, is really our go-to person, um, the boots on the ground for the house. Um, we are dedicated to finding highly qualified people, so our compensation package will include time off as well as some other perks for that individual because we realize that being a household head is a demanding job and that everybody needs a break, even from their own family, if you will, <laughs> for time. Um, so we're really excited to find that special person or special couple that could come live at Yellow House. And that person might live there for two years. We we're aiming for a commitment of a minimum of one to two years, um, but we'd love to have someone who wants to stay five years or ten years and makes <coughs> Yellow House their home as well. Um, one of the most important things for the founding families is that their children have a consistency of place. So when they can no longer care for their children and they moved on, that their children know that Yellow House is always their home. And that may not be the same for every resident, and it may not be the same for Pearson, but the thinking is that we have a consistency of place. And householders may come and go, but we're hoping that Yellow House becomes a place that people move into and they love it and they never want to leave. You know, Heartbeat's a great example of that. They have residents that have been there for since the beginning, and other Camp Hill communities have people that are, you know, 40, 50 years of life at Camp Hill. Um, coworkers are also live-in positions. Um, they are often AmeriCorps volunteers or individuals that are um, contributing a year of service. Um, so their responsibilities are different. They're more of the um, during the day activities and programming where the householder is our evening through breakfast, real leadership and oversight. Um, but the co-worker opportunity really appeals to often um, recent graduates from college or people who say, I'm looking for something different, I want a new experience. Um, so those co-workers will also have perks like time off you know, during the week and time off um, weeks per year as well. Um, but that's something that Camp Hill communities, co-workers, uh, those are highly sought after positions um, because they're a lot of fun provides an opportunity to get to know a unique group of individuals. Um, and we are looking forward to finding those special people as well. Um, also, we envision continuing to have some daytime support staff um, functioning in a similar capacity to what Kim, Sally, and Tom are doing. Um, and that position does appeal to a lot of people who don't want a full-time gig, right? Who want to be able to come in a couple days a week and give it their all and have a lot of fun and then you know, pursue other things. So that's an, um, one thing that we're looking for selectively, as well as people who would be interested in substituting, whether it's for a daytime support role or also providing a weekend off for our household head, that, that kind of thing. Um, and finally, volunteers. Um, and as I said, we've already had some volunteers who have been part of Yellow House, and we really encourage that. We feel like the gifts and um, the skills of our community members are vast and a great resource, and we look forward to 
engaging with volunteers, and we're um, open and welcome to that. So if you're interested in any of those things, as I said, please get a hold of me. Um, before we leave tonight, I will pass out an information summary, if you will, which has a lot of the points from tonight's PowerPoint as well as contact information on there. So this is the last piece. Um, once again, my name is Elise Hayden. I'm the executive director, and I'm really the point of contact at Yellow House right now. Um, so there's my contact information as well as our newly designed website. Um, and you can actually link to that. So our website is organized in a similar fashion. It speaks to a lot of these same points. I'll pull it up later to have on there. Um, also on our website is a contact me um, spot where you can email me directly or get that contact information. All right. I think I kept it to about a half an hour. Thank you for your patience. So now we'd like to open up the floor for questions and answers. Um, and the founding families um, have agreed to join in in some of that conversation, if applicable. Um, so are there any questions? <laughs> it's going to be an early night. <laughs> I'm glad you brought up that photo, because that is one thing I forgot to mention. Is um, Part of programming and volunteers is that we have this amazing artist in residence series um, that we started a couple months ago, where we have local artists like Chris Murray come in um, and work with a group, and it's been really successful. Rebecca Kincaid is coming in a couple weeks to paint the Yellow House Friends. Really excited about that. So art and music um, and cooking, too, are really big parts of our programming and um, so we're pleased about that. Yes, sir. Hi. Um, yeah, I guess, um, so my name is Steve. I'm the dad of a 27-year-old young man with autism and um, who uh, currently run a program for a home. We're currently relocating from Burlington to Millbury, where my wife has a home. And first, I just want to commend you on all the work you put into this and how ambitious the program is. I really think it's, it's pretty you. amazing. So, I think it's really, uh, it's very inspiring to other people in the, in the developmental disabilities community to see things like this happening. So thank, thank you for that. Um, I wanted to ask, um, for parents who want to begin to get involved, would, would a volunteer be the appropriate position? Or what role do you see for parents of other residents in this, um, including um, during transition times, as well as um, for individuals who might have needs that are that are um, a little more extensive. Well, that's a great question. Thank you for asking about parent involvement. I didn't speak to that. Um, so we envision that parents are going to be a really strong part of our community. Um, we're starting right here in Middlebury because if an individual, if a resident is local, then that means their family is local, and we can pull them into the mix at Yellow House. Um, so I think really the most appropriate place to start. Um, is with our application and letting us know about your um, your son's profile and, and how he might fit into Yellow House. Um, volunteering is always encouraged, and I think that could also be an appropriate way. Um, but I think it's really it's important for us to get a sense of who your son is and um, what the fit could be. And you know, even if the fit isn't residential, but the fit might be someone who gets involved um, if and when we can, can when if and when we can create day programming and options like that for a greater audience. Sure. To follow up, I guess part of what I'm asking is, um, do you have any sense of what types of I don't know if rules is the right word, but guidelines would apply to um, whether residents would take be able to take time off and go back with their families or how time would be divided or how that would Certainly. Um, I think it's some, there, I know there are some um, 
depends on us to some. Of course, we want people to spend time with their families. One of the reasons I think we want to do this is we want to be neighbors with our adult children and want to be able to um, stop by and have lunch and uh, work in the garden and um, go to the, I don't know, a hockey game with, with our children and our family members. Um, and we want them to be able to come home on occasion too. And I know that um, it's important also to understand where your funding source is coming from too because there is some commitment there to as well um, with regard to a placement. Um, but I think that, you know, uh, family is so important to everybody and um, it's, it's, it's not everybody has that and so being part of Yellow House community will be a family, an extended family, but I think if outside family members want to participate, that's important too. Can I make a quick comment on that? Uh, <clears throat> practically speaking, one of the things that we, we probably should say is that a lot of these programs operate on a school calendar kind of model, um, and there's a lot of uh, virtue in that. One is that there's a cadence to having your adult child back in your life. There's a cadence to having the program stand down a little bit to do maintenance or let householders have time with their own extended family and so on. Um, so from a family standpoint, we, we like the idea that our daughter will <coughs> join us for family holidays and family vacations and so on, but when she's back at Yellow House, that's her life. And there's a certain degree of independence. There's also a certain degree of contact, so we love that. We. We put it in the village of Middlebury because we thought Middlebury would, would reward this idea with tremendous support, which it has. But the neighborly concept is real. And so I always imagine myself as a parent being the person that would be helping in the industry, you know, or helping at the hockey outing. Uh, as if my child, in some respects, was still at home and in Girl Scouts or 4-H or something along those lines. So, you know, I guess in my mind, I'm, I'm hoping to meet a bunch of people I haven't met yet who are uh, fellow parents, and we bring something to Yellow House together in support of, of the folks. And you're, you've had that experience, probably most of you here, with, with the children that you've raised in your own household, and there's a piece of that we can keep alive while still creating that independence. Other questions? So many people here tonight. Um, you know, we do have a sign-in sheet, and would love it for you to sign in and share your contact information, so we can um, keep you up to date with events and things. And there's a box you can check if you are interested in um, an application or employment, and um, at least we'll follow up with you um, with respect to that. No more questions? So if you're yes. Can you elaborate on the application process a little bit? So people apply for their mm -hmm. adult children. And then do you select a group for the program? How do you target the same? Certainly. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably part. the hardest part of, <laughs> of starting Yellow House is knowing that we'll have to say no to mm -hmm. individuals. Yes, so starts with the application. Um, Coming here tonight and connecting with us um, to let us know your interest in, is great. Um, we'll send families or individuals, guardians, um, an application. Like I said, it's it's very thorough and still being modified just a bit um, so that it's, it is our best work. Um, so that will go out and that asks for information, everything from you know an initial diagnosis to health <coughs> history and to... Um, challenging behaviors, strengths, and skills, and um, what makes the person applying tick, right? Um, we'll, our, our excuse me, admissions committee will then review that information. And from that point on, you'll either receive an invitation for an in-person interview and visit to Yellow House, or 
um, a statement saying that based on your application, it doesn't seem that um, an individual meets admissions criteria or would be a good fit. Or you may also receive something that says, Yellow House would, learn, would love to learn more. We're at capacity, um, but at this time we will add you to our applicant pool. Or maybe we'll invite you for an interview knowing that uh, potentially there's an opportunity for um, someone moving out in the future. But it'll be one of those three options. So an invitation for an interview, um, a s sharing that it's, it doesn't seem like um, the right fit or meeting emissions criteria, or that you're added to our applicant pool. And then beyond that, uh, for individuals who are invited for the interview and to visit Yellow House, um, if that, and for the group, for the committee that uh, was part of that interview, seems like it's going to be a good fit for someone to join transition programming, then they'll be invited for the daytime transition programming. Um, and that, as I mentioned, will become five days a week. We understand that individuals have other commitments. Individuals have jobs or um, volunteer experiences, etc. So if a participant can't do all five days, that's not a deal breaker, but we definitely want that person to start joining into Yellow House activities and into the flow of you know, the day-to-day -day so that we can see that real fit between residents and with staff members. Part of transition programming is also some overnights that occur just on a monthly basis um, that, we're, that we'll be starting up this summer. Um, and then Beyond that, if transition programming works well, then an individual will be invited for a residential trial, and that's that two to four week period. Um, so there are lots of steps in the process. As I mentioned, we're trying to be really intentional about it. Um, I feel like the worst thing we could do is to invite someone to come live at Yellow House to find out three weeks later that it's not the right fit. And I think that could be heartbreaking for a family or for an individual or both. So we're really trying to avoid that scenario by taking these increments, these steps. Yes, so that's really the full process. What will be happening behind the scenes at that time is families speaking with their designated agencies to learn about funding and explore what that looks like. Um, and that may entail um, some work with their designated agency. Um, as well so that will be happening simultaneously and we're learning as well as we go here trying to figure out um, the most efficient mechanism for funding um, so that we can pass that along to families. But to be clear the founders children take up two spots just there, so there's one or two left is that correct? Um, we, we aren't sure yet um, so we, we we, our zoning has the um, approval to have six residents with special needs living on the property. Um, we aren't sure whether it's four in the yellow house and two in the carriage barn or three and three. And we're not completely sure when our children will be in either of them. I think we want to be really um, intentional about finding the right fit um, for everyone. Uh, and. Um, you know, and it's and I'm eyes wide open. Someday this may not be the right fit for my child, too. Uh, I completely uh, am aware of that, but um, it needs to. It, it's a lot about chemistry um, when you're putting a group of people together to live together, and it's more I think about chemistry than it is about ability um, in a lot of ways. So uh, yes, yeah, so we have two spots for our children and so we're looking to fill four um, and who knows maybe someday down the road we'll be able to expand even but um, right now we're looking to fill four. Can you mention real quick uh, Heartbeat because they, they, they have grown over time um, with additional residential capacity. Could you just outline that quickly because I, I think we hope the community is large enough to feel fresh and vivid and doesn't get stale, which does involve some critical mass, whatever that is. Hey, <laughs> From what I know, Jim might want to jump in because Jim has worked so closely with Heartbeat. Heartbeat, um, they literally started with two residents, two friends, um, the founder, um, 
brought two people into her own home and started that community and then she got her TCR and started rolling and brought in more residents. They now, I, I don't, I can't remember, what did they say, did they have 24? They, at any rate, they have several homes on one campus, which is a working farm, very, very rural. They also now have um, an in-town campus, and they just keep growing. The need is there. People are asking. They do their fundraising. Um, they see scaling as a big thing for everyone, as Elise said, it keeps it fresh. I mean, who doesn't love to have more friends? Um, when they're doing good things. So, I mean, <coughs> Joe's point is that down the road that would be fantastic if we could scale in that way. Um, the reality is, you know, baby steps. It's hard and we have to get the first residence right. Yeah. So. <laughs> and we hope that yeah. you know, the families who join this effort with us and are kind of the first families will help us define the vision going beyond the occupancy of the yellow house and the carriage barn and you know we just we know too that it becomes more affordable in a scaling model as well. And you know what? We've never done this before. <laughs> so you know we may not get it all right the first time around and I think we are totally aware of that and it comes from a place of good intentions and trying to build something really wonderful not just for our children but it can benefit other people or whether it's at Yellow House or whether we can share our model with other families who want to do something similar somewhere else. So when you're looking at the application process and you're looking at your potential friends that will be in the community, um, there are, um, our family members are probably all over the board as far as their abilities and their uniqueness. So I'm assuming the application process is you're going to be looking at what's going to be a good fit uh, personality-wise and ability-wise. Some folks are going to be higher functioning, some people are going to have more challenges. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, we also are looking for individuals we know we can support. So part of our licensure with State of Vermont as a TCR stipulates that we cannot have residents that we can't support. So Mary um, has so kindly uh, partnered with us as our nurse affiliate. Um, she is the healthcare provider who will help train our staff to disseminate medications and to work with the individuals, but we won't have 24-hour nursing care on site. So that's a good example of um, not, you know, an individual we couldn't support is someone who has extensive medical needs. Um, we will not be able to support someone who has um, extreme behavioral challenges that are uh, extremely violent or aggressive. Um, that is not the staff, as you see with our life-sharing model. We may find that we have staff with a myriad of backgrounds, and they might not be former special educators, you know, or people who are graduating from college with degrees in psychology or, you know, specifically um, with education in this field. We're looking for people who want to be part of this community and love our residents and bring joy to their lives and help them navigate the world and be interdependent, team together. Um, so, so we do, as part of the that application, um, we do have an, ass an assessment that goes through daily living skills, you know, everything from communication to uh, self-care and grooming. Um, and we're looking at that as much for fit with other residents as we are for what we can support with our staff. <coughs> Uh, certainly, no, we, we haven't addressed that. Um, so that's part of Mary's role in partnering with us, um, is that she'll be helping our team develop meal plans on a weekly basis. Um, and that is, once again, one of our requirements for the TCR. I mean, as much as having these regulations that are this thick, that was probably the first thing Andrea gave to me when, <laughs> when I was hired, was the TCR regulations. They're also great um, 
it's a great roadmap for how to run an organization um, that does address everyone's different needs. So Mary will partner with us um, to create those meal plans and also um, keeping in mind dietary restrictions um, and you know everything from how to shop for those, how to budget for those. Um, all of that is learning for our residents. But if it is if it's a, a dietary concern that requires you know, having nurse on staff, then that would be something that's not, um, that wouldn't be the right fit for Yellow House. I have a yeah. question. Um, so what's happening there right now? Uh, um, two friends are living there? Great, right great now? question. Um, so nobody is living at Yellow House as of right now. Okay. Um, so going back to that timeline, our goal is that we move in residence um, by this fall, and we potentially may move in some staff this summer um, that we want to onboard a little bit earlier. So right now we are in the middle of transition programming, and it's ongoing. And it's for um, currently for the children of our founders, as well as a couple young adults who have been part of Yellow House since the start, um, and who have an earnest interest in being residents, um, and who have gone through the transition process application, things like that, that um, have identified, helped us identify those individuals could be the right fit for Yellow House. Um, so that is currently happening, um, but we, it's really important for us to get our TCR license before we opened up to officially start the application process um, because that TCR is so critical to funding and to us operating um, as Medicaid waiver funded organization. Can, can I add one thing to that? Yeah. Um, from a family standpoint, part of the uh, purpose of this meeting is to test our own timeline against local interest and, and demand. Because once we start moving to residential, you know, you want to move at a certain pace so everybody can get used to it, but you also want to get to a place where the first to move in isn't sort of living alone. And, and so we are trying to gauge um, whether this is a local community experience serving local families or let's say nearby in the greater Vermont uh, area, or whether or not there isn't enough interest locally because many of these Camp Hill communities um, have uh, residents moving in from far away, which we could presumably do. Uh, so what's great about tonight is it just gives us a sense of uh, where we are, and then we can start laying out this development of the first residential block, which is in the yellow house itself, and then the second block, which is in the carriage house. So if nothing else, you're, you're being here tonight um, is frankly crucial to our, our sense of pace and how close at home we are versus broad in terms of recruiting um, a community. So we'd love to hear, you know, what your interest is in any case so we can use that as feedback. Yes? Our son went to the high school here and because there's not a whole lot around for our child to go to after that we applied well, through, through DO he got in touch with um, the Succeed program up in Burlington which is a two year program where he, he lives up there and he goes to he has access to like CCV um, UVM um, in St. Mike's with a lot of support. Um, he can take certain classes with the fact that he, no. yeah, he doesn't get credit. But he can take these classes. Um, we have a, a lady that works with us through CCB that says, you know, um, Jeb doesn't read all that well and Jeb doesn't write all that well, but Jeb is taking like, um, right now he's taking sign language, which is something he can handle. He likes that stuff. And he's uh, got another class that he takes through Succeed that teaches him um, 
how to advocate for himself and things like that. That being said, it's a two-year program. And he's up in Burlington. Um, we have a pretty close family ourselves. We have six children, and we're all they're all right around this area. So when we found out about the Yellow House, um, it was it's a godsend. It's you know we can have him be here without being here here, um, which you know. That's what we all raise our children to do, is to be independent and, you know, like you said, we're not all going to be here. I mean, he's 20. I'm going to be 60 in two years, you know. There's no way I'm going to be here for him in a little bit. So I need to make sure something's in place for him, even with that being said and having lots of brothers and sisters, they have their lives too. Yeah. So, you know, this is this is a godsend for, I don't know about everybody else, but for us, because he'll be local. He's worked here in the community. Elise taught him. She helped me get him into social or into uh, succeed. And that was that was like pulling teeth <laughs> that. I mean, we had to figure out because we've always been there for him, we didn't realize how much we did for him until we sat down and actually filled out a paper where somebody said to us, can he do this by himself? And it was like, well, yeah, he can. And he said, well, if you're not here, he can do that. And it's like... Well, he, he went in the other room. The guy interviewed him for an hour. And we filled out the paper. And the guy went through the paper that we just filled out. And he's like, this is the same kid I just didn't <laughs> So all these questions are without any help. Well, yeah, we help there. Yeah, and yes. yeah, we help there. And yeah, we remind him to bathe. And yeah, we remind him to so, brush his teeth. Yes, he can do all this with gentle prodding. Oh, I appreciate you bringing that up because that's actually part of Yellow House design is this idea of interdependence. So as a special educator, you're always trained to try and help individuals be as independent as possible. It's all about independent living skills, independent this, independent that. If someone can't be independent, what kind of life is that? So Yellow House is about being interdependent, depending on one another, caring for one another, supporting one another, like we all do in our own lives, in our own homes. Right. Right? And it doesn't matter if Jeb's 20 or if my son's 5. You help each other with what they need help with. So Yellow House is, has embraced that, right? And then with industry and growing our organization, we're going to provide opportunities for people to excel and shine in areas that speak to them. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a shift of thinking, but it's pretty exciting. And it will be as exciting for our, our life-sharing staff as it will be for our residents and their families. So we'll find that actually we all together can make this work and really enjoy it. I mean, we've had so much fun. I should say these guys have had so much fun because I've been like at the computer typing away for a few months now, but uh, just being out in the community and celebrating each other's strengths and um, quirks, right, is, is a lot of fun. Yes? Just want to speak as a parent um, of someone who just wanted to see what this is all about. I mean, it's a beautiful building right in the middle of town, and I assume we all want to have our kids nearby. But you know, I think you're just looking for a very specific kind of people to live there, which I totally can understand. But I guess my my daughter would not fit your criteria, which is kind of disappointing for me, but that's going to be your struggle to find somebody who really fits your criteria. Uh, I just yeah. want to add something to that because that's been something that kind of hits me. Um, we need to start with the people we know we can serve 
easily so that we can get this up and off the ground. I, I totally understand. And who knows what will happen down the road. I, if I, you know, could, I would try and accommodate every single person who had a need. Um, you know, but the reality is right now we need to start at a place we know or we think we can manage and then grow from there and evolve from there. And um, yes, your assessment is correct. Rayfield Bleachers here. Um, so, um, I want to follow up on this last lady's um, point. My, my son is also not um, going to be an appropriate resident here. Um, if the list includes never having had a problem behavior or um, demonstrating living skills, proficiency, as opposed to being in the practice of learning, then you know, that's, that's just not him. But I actually have a question for you, and it's sort of a little bit. Um, off, off the beaten path. For, for individuals with more severe developmental disabilities, what is than others, um, the socialization piece is almost always the hardest piece. And part of what makes it as hard as it is, is that um, one of the criteria for that diagnosis is that you're not naturally drawn to socialization. It's something you have to be taught to eventually find the enjoyment in and then to begin enjoying independently. Um, this isn't for right away, but would you guys ever be open to adding a wrinkle to your model where individuals with more severe developmental disabilities who couldn't be residents still could come part of the time with one-on-one -on -one direct care support and participate in some of the social things that you do so they can get the benefit of that yeah. without impeding their activities? Absolutely. I mean, I think that's a, there's a two-part response to that one. Is yes, we want to do that. Um, the second piece of that is my son has autism, and um, he's not high-functioning autism. Um, they say you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism, you've heard that. Um, one of the reasons we have engaged the support of Ray Chin, and I don't know if you know him, Dr. Chin, um, he's pretty amazing at, um, he has helped our child uh, blossom and really learn how to delight in social situations. And um, I, some of our other uh, participants right now are also on the spectrum. And so I don't want to in any way give you the sense that we are not accommodating people with autism. Because right. we I are. To, I didn't mean to apply that at all. I'm just um, saying, like, for people who might not meet the criteria that you have, just because of what you have to do. This might still give them a way in in a lesser yes. pervasive way. And we so. want to do that. And that is definitely part of our finish. And what I shared this evening um, as far as some resident characteristics is by no means comprehensive. Um, I would encourage you to, to contact me for an application. We try to outline um, a resident profile um, as well as areas of challenge that we anticipate residents having so you get a sense of a resident that we feel we can best support at Yellow House. Um, you may look at that and say, whoa, that doesn't really look like what she said because I there's so much content I'm covering and I feel like I've spoken to bits and pieces, but each individual is a unique individual, right, who may or may not be the right fit, but they might not exactly look like our profile. And at the end of the day, they might be the best roommate to one of our other residents we could have. So I encourage you um, to email me and uh, to look at that resident profile and to you know, visit our website and learn more about our offerings to see if it could be the right fit and explore that. Um, we don't want people to feel like doors are shut um, because of something I shared tonight as far as who might be the right fit with that yellow house. And I would encourage you, even if, if your child is not going to be the right fit, leave your contact information. We have an email list. One of the challenges we have right now is part of our zoning. We have a responsibility to not have so many people in the house at once, and we're being respectful of that. And our priority is trying to identify the group of first residents. 
But we do have social things. We had a Halloween party. We had a tree trimming party. Um, we've gone to hockey games together. And if we have that email list, we can ping that out when we are out and about doing those kinds of things. Um, we're meeting other friends at the rec center. I'm saying, we I'm never there. <laughs> <Our wonderful staff. laughs> um, they, they meet friends at the rec center on a weekly basis. So we definitely are trying to build a broader social community that really might work for a lot of a lot of your children, even if they're not necessarily potential residents. Um, and we also, so, so you know, do leave your name. And we also have opportunity for friends who maybe are higher functioning yep. and who have been coming to Yellow House and showing us how do you navigate after. And last summer, some friends came and um, took us to Festival on the Green. And so there is an opportunity for someone who maybe has never been in a mentor type situation to actually be a mentor to our friends as well. We always make too much for lunch. <laughs> and they always make too much for lunch. Yeah. So we have lots of people. We love having guests lunch. though. And they're good cooks. And they're good cooks. Yes. Mm -hmm. I did it some of the previous meetings that you've had. We talked about diet and exercise and the different activities and potential businesses. For the first time tonight, somebody mentioned like college. Um, have you thought about like you know having like a book reading thing where people take turns reading to each other or online courses or videos, just instructional type things, learning. So we haven't explored college classes online. Um, I feel like some of what we're doing right now is well, this is college. I, I yeah. <laughs> um, specific to interest to so the, the artists um, in resident series. Um, Sally Fodal, who is um, in the back there, reads with our group. Um, every afternoon we have programming. You know, they're reading Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory right now. That's um, been a fun one. Uh, but I would say it's going to be driven by by our, our residents and what they want to do. And uh, you know, if they want to go learn pottery or a sport or you know, something more intellectual, we're open to that. It's, it's all about what our friends and staff want to do. Um, but I appreciate that, you know, thinking kind of outside of the box of where we are right now um, to more, a more academic option. Say Brock probably won't be one to push reading. That would be sort of the parents saying, you know, reading is probably good. <laughs> and they probably won't like, yeah, give me some some sneakers, I want to run. But we, we might want to push them towards exercise also. Well, ex I will say exercise is a, a pretty yeah. critical part. They're ready so. to be read to at the end of the day. They're pretty yeah. tucker at 3 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, we feel like taking care of our bodies so not just taking care of our own, our house, our physical property. Those are both really critical pieces. Um, and to speak to the food thing, although I'm not sure what dietary restrictions um, you specifically are interested in, but um, we are very committed to healthy eating. And I don't mean healthy as it just, you know, you hear a commercial for healthy food, but um, we're shopping at the co-op. We're shopping at, with local farmers. Um, we're making wholesome meals from scratch every day that these guys cook together for lunch. Um, we have raised beds that have yet to be used. But yes. We'll be growing beds. Growing so we'll be vegetables. growing vegetables this summer. Um, everybody who's involved staff-wise are all they're all very committed to healthy a healthy lifestyle with exercise and food, um, which is really a blessing because. When I say, oh, we should shop at the co-op, they're like, absolutely, let's do it. And let's get the organic, you know, the organic carrots from Elmer Farm, and let's go visit Elmer Farm to see where they were grown and how to harvest them. So um, that's that's really essential. That's just going to be a given at Yellow House. But we're also, I mean, I shouldn't, I don't want that to sound exclusive either, because we're also shopping at Shaw's and at you know other places too and visiting our friends who work in some of these places and it's I think um, I think that what the most important point is knowing where your food comes from and one of the things for my son is when you plant a seed 
and a carrot grows, that's pretty cool. You get it, right? You can pick it and you can hopefully wash it and then eat it. <laughs> and then you take the top off of the carrot and it goes back in the compost and you use that to grow the next one and that's something that he understands. And it's meaningful, right? It's pretty exciting. I just want to say that. So when I'm not hearing from you, so for, for my situation, my daughter's 20, she has autism, but she's becoming more and more dependent. The more dependent she gets, the more mischievous she gets, so I don't think we're ready to let her go anymore <laughs> for a few years. But um, what I hear from people is that there's really need for residential, but there's really, where some of us are really looking for, is a really good day program. And not that everything has to go on your shoulders, it shouldn't. But just more models are great, like Zach's place. I'm sure you can Zach's place. I just love it. I wish we had more Zach's place. Yeah in different parts of the state. Can I comment on that real quick? The, uh, the day programming um, could have been our mission because there's plenty of need for that. Anybody who's ever seen a child finish senior year and <clears throat> then they're there in the morning and you have no idea what you're going to do next knows that feeling. But um, I think, you know, we have to, we have to be pragmatic and aspirational at the same time. The aspirational piece in my mind is that there is a community that would have lots of uh, different ways that people could connect. It could be socialization, you know, a handful of times a year, but it's a complement to their otherwise generally independent life from the L House. It could be a certain amount of participation in our industry or programming. But in the beginning, it, it starts with residential. But the thing about it is our interests are probably aligned with all of yours in the sense that if we got our kids into a house and it was four people that were going to spend presumably many years together, that would be an achievement, but that wouldn't be a community. That would be a residence. So I'm as excited about <coughs> the idea of a larger engagement, something that ties us all together. I'm as excited about that as I am two healthy households at 29 Seminary. And, you know, that's an aspiration, but it's something we're pretty seriously interested in. Any other questions? <coughs> well, thank you all for coming out tonight. As Andrea mentioned, please sign in with us. You can also leave the box that says, please add me to your email list. You can leave it blank. So just by signing in tonight does not mean I will um, send you a ton of Yellow House emails. But this does give us the opportunity to connect with you um, and if you're interested in an application or interested in employment opportunities, I would love to hear from you as well. So they're not, there's an opportunity to check those boxes. Um, finally, our night's presentation um, summarized on two pages here um, with some general information. Also, our website has additional information, and you can always contact me. Um, we aim to have a public information session so we could reach all of you at once because the ra reality is when you're starting up a business and organization things are busy it's hard to meet with each individual family um, so we asked you to come here tonight so we could brief you all that said um, I'm always happy to answer emails and phone calls um, with specific questions I'm please take a treat for Chelsea or This is like Christmas cookies. We have to make them go away no matter what.